Remarkably, it is 15 years ago that Dr. Todd Overkites began remembering an ancient and sacred practice of toning. This remembrance gave birth to what is known today across the globe as the pineal tones. The evolution of the tones has expanded well beyond the original purpose of growth and healing. Under the loving guidance and instruction from Cryon, Dr. Todd was informed about the true purpose of the tones, which was to create a Lemurian choir and sing the tones on December 21, 2012, in Maui, Hawaii. So this event coincided with the procession of the equinox. Since then, Dr. Todd has assembled four other significant choirs. Three of them corresponded to where the Pleiadian time capsules occur. Cryon has told us that there are 12 major time capsules represented by matching pairs of nodes and knolls. So think of these time capsules as portals that transfer quantum energies to the grids of the earth, allowing for higher consciousness, invention, and human DNA evolution. In essence, it's a fast track system to create peace on the planet, among other things. So today's choir is taking place in Hot Springs, Arkansas, near Mount Ida, which is yet another significant portal. It's one of the 12 pairs. The other unique feature is that we're on top of a substantial amount of quartz and geologists are even known to say that the highest, best quality quartz in the world are found in Arkansas and Brazil. So, you might actually say that the area we are in is primed for remembering and recording the conscious intent of this choir. So it's your conscious intent that I wish to speak of a few weeks ago, during Dr. Todd's workshop in Holland, Cryon gave some new information about the pineal tones. Cryon revealed that the tones do not require a precision of harmony. They require a precision of intent. When the tones are sung and heard with consciousness, it acts as a catalyst and it creates an energy of remembrance. It's something you can't see, but you can feel it. There are even stories of those who didn't participate in any singing, who stood in the back, listening to others as they sang, and they were changed forever. So, what exactly are you remembering? Cryon told us the pineal tones help fast tracking a remembrance of who you were when you helped see this planet. In other words, you are your own parents. And in some way, you have the ability to remember all of it slowly. You can remember your eternalness and that all is well. And that is why it affects healing. And that is why you will live longer. It's a catalyst for an energy that is multi-dimensional and it's controlled mostly with intent. So to conclude, Cryon wants us to envision a book that magically opens and reveals the history of all living things everywhere. It's a book that opens and feeds you about the fact that you've been doing this before Perhaps you've even walked through a shift on other planets and you're remembering it's okay and you're remembering why you're here. These tones are therefore personal with your name on it. It's not for the masses, it's not for a group, but for you. That's how it's designed, with love and purpose. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. 
We are with you seven short times this day. And typically with what we have done in the past, we wish to emphasize each time with a letter. Seven letters that spell crystal. And the first is C. This is different from other gatherings. Other gatherings, there are many who come to hear the cry on work, to hear the channelings, the voices from beyond, not this gathering. This is a gathering with purpose, and the cry on channeling is an addendum, a guidance for what is here. I want you to understand an underlying principle of energy that is in this room now. And it's one that sometimes you miss. You miss it because you are consumed with the tones, with the purpose, with the intent, but you miss the real thing, and that is, what's this about? If someone were to hear you in here, and would ask you when you leave, well, what are you doing? What's this about? What would you say? What really would you say? The C could stand for celebration. It could stand for creation. It could stand for crystalline choir. And that is what we want to tell you about in this short amount of time. You might say it's a review, but it isn't. But what's going to be revealed today, some of you have been asking for. This one is special. If you were with me in the crystalline quartz mines, a little way from here, you will have heard this information before. Many of you did not. Everything here was a setup, and it was set up when humanity was seated. Over 200,000 years ago, when all of this began, that's not long, not long at all. When the creation story itself was present, you had the seeding of the human being. DNA was changed forever. You are part Pleiadian. There are those who walk this planet and accuse you of being aliens. <laughs> you are! <clears throat> and so are they. <laughs> the science that was presented in this very room indicates that the missing link that would give you 20 fair, 24 pairs of chromosomes is not there. It's just not there. It won't be there unless you go to the stars. You are part of the parents that are Pleiadian. And when you came, there was a plan. You might even call it the meaning of life. The plan was to come on this planet with an awakened consciousness with God inside and with free choice, see what would happen. There is a reason for this, an underlying reason why you would be here why can't God make these decisions? <laughs> Why do humans have to come and work a puzzle at all? And the reason is God is biased in love. There's something that happens when a planet of free choice makes a decision and raises its vibration. The whole galaxy is changed. One at a time. One planet among trillions. One planet at a time chosen for this the only planet of free choice at this moment is this one and the prophecy was clear that when you cross this meridian if you want to call it which is the precession of the equinoxes it all starts this is why the nodes and the nulls were put here this is why the, tam, the time capsules were prepared 200,000 years even before that. They would open 
on time if the humans knew about them and would do it dear ones do you understand what's going on here as esoteric as this may seem to those on the outside you are activating something that is profound right now on this crystalline node you are then activating it to broadcast to the crystalline grid which is more than you think on the seventh time I'm going to tell you why it's more than you think once this is activated with the tones that you are doing now it begins slowly to spread a remembrance which oddly enough is the next letter <laughs> this is important people have said well it's maybe a little too profound what would have happened if there had been no Yah-E what would have happened if there had been no crystalline choir or perhaps even the choir of activation in Maui what would have happened and the answer is someone else would have done it what would have happened if my partner had not taken on cry out someone else would have done it this is intrinsic to the time It's important that you understand this. You're in the right time in the right place. But it had to happen. And it would have. But in this particular case, it happened perfectly. And there was a Yai. And he remembered. I want to ask you, what are the odds that a man of science would also remember that from his Pleiadian mother at this time on the planet? What are the odds? it ought to tell you right time right schedule see the crystalline choir begins now building a bridge of enlightenment through seed sounds of creation the letter R through the seed sounds of creation. How do you build a bridge with a tone? And how do you know what the tone is? Through remembering what it was like at the creation. This is an R. This is remembering. This is the bottom line of while you're here. And you might ask yourself, remembering what? Really? What does the tone represent? What is it exactly that you are bringing from that long ago through the toning that is pineal, the pineal representing that reservoir of higher self energy? What is it you're remembering? What was it like? What are the attributes? And how does it apply to today? These are the questions that are the basis and the, the actual elements to the crystalline grid, to this exercise today. What is it you're spreading into this node right now? What is it you're activating that would create information which is going to go all over the planet to an esoteric grid not a physical grid this is a physical node but the crystalline grid echoes this physical node whatever you do here and activates and starts to rewrite history with what it rewrites history with what you're remembering so what is it physically could you describe it and we can dear ones when the knowledge of dark and light was given to you when you grew up into it and got used to it you say when the dust settled after what is called the creative event when many kinds of human beings became one and all of this started there was a starting point of DNA efficiency 
and also of consciousness. And the Pleiadians didn't dumb it down for you. They gave it to you, pure. We told you that it was intuitive that women would have the shamanship of the planet, and they did. The life givers, the ones, the mothers that you go to for advice when you're a child, all genders, all genders, look to the mother. That's pure information of the way it should be structured so that you would have the best sacred information on the planet from the life givers. All contained in these tones in the intent that you sing. Because the tones carry almost as a fundamental carrier all of this information back into this node and it spreads into the crystalline. It actually gives a positioning of beginning to the planet, a restart if you wish. And that's what's going on. And that's where it has to come from. What else would there be? Who is God? Who are you? God is not the Pleiadians. The Pleiadians were messengers, their parents. You don't worship your parents. If your parents tell you about a beautiful creative source and show you what it's like and give you the information that is so precious, that's what, that's what you look at, not them. That God is inside, not outside. That means the answers to all of the problems of consciousness, of health, of all things on the planet is when you turn inward, not out. It's not an exterior solution. It's an interior solution. Because God is inside. That is intuitive, sacred, original information, and it isn't here. So much that was given was lost. The relationship to the living planet Earth where you talk to each other so you can wander out into the field and not only can you hear it speak in its own way but Gaia shows you things things move, lights appear sometimes apparitions of your own design are there just to say Gaia knows you and you know Gaia it's alive it has to be your partners in life you are changing the vibration of the earth do you think it's dead? How can that be? There has got to be an interchange. The ancestors knew it. They still do. There would be those who say, well, the ancestors didn't have much. All they, all they had was the, the animals and the streams and the sky. Well, of course, that's what they worshipped. How simple of you. They felt it. They saw it. They knew the earth. They cognized the divinity inside everything. They were aware of what I call the field. That is original, sacred information given to you by your parents, by the Pleiadians. How you treat each other, what works in society, the win-win situation instead of the survival and competition the sharing of resources helping one another seeing God inside each and singing celebrations to others you don't know original information you don't see it today much do you but you will listen but you will because you have rekindled it today in these tones of remembrance like carrier waves of a massive amount of information being placed on the crystalline grid this node that you are on was waiting for these remembrances with these tones to be placed here 
And if you hadn't had the intent of the tone, it wouldn't have happened. Right place at the right time. Do you feel this? It's just not a place where you get together and sing and have fun. You're doing something. You may not all understand what I'm saying. You don't have to. For the akash in you is remembering just enough to produce the intent of the tones that Yahi has guided you to produce. In the way he has, this is a crystal node and it's absorbing what you're doing right now. You are remembering and giving it the information that it's about to spread on this planet. And you might say, this is wonderful. Does that mean the whole planet is now going to change when we walk out the door? <laughs> Oh, dear ones, it's got to start somewhere. Generations it will take. It has to start somewhere. There has to be a catalyst of remembrance. There has to be shift. This is part of it. Remembering, now you know. And that's just a few of the things, a very few, of the precious original purity of what the Pleiadians brought through their knowledge of the creative source. And now you have it. Congratulations for being in the right place at the right time. Dear ones, with all of these heady sounds, with all of the feelings that build in the room at this time with what you're doing and the profundity of the multidimensionality which you are cre you're, you're creating creating it would be easy to forget the letter Y is Yahweh the most profound name of God in the Hebrew language and there's a reason why we teach this in the Hebrew language in a moment we'll speak of it Yahweh is the creative source it is God it is spirit it is all that is it is the I am it is life. We have told you that God, Spirit, whatever you want to call it, is the creator of all things. All things. There are always those who are so linear they say this is not acceptable because what was before that? Because the human being is so biased in linearity they have a hard concept with things that have no beginning if you have a piece of string it has a beginning and an end and that is the way you see everything everything it echoes that which is your life it echoes that with everything you own there's a beginning there's an end but not with God Imagine a loving energy that always was and always will be. Before the universes existed, there was God. Before God, there was God. Think of it as a circle that never ends. Nothing breaks out of that circle. It was and always was original. That's why you're here. This was not the first universe. We told you that. Can you imagine how long these processes that you go through might have been if they were multiverses? Long before yours, what you call the Big Bang that wasn't. 
long before this. What if there were others? And others before that and others before that. And then this one occurred and here you are yet again in a galaxy among trillions of galaxies. What's happening in the other galaxies you might ask? What if it's the same as what is happening here? What if the plan is so grand and so big that it is beyond all comprehension of any human being? Do you want to know more about it? Then tune in to what's inside. You can have an experience of your own where you're filled with the knowledge of all. They say it'll pop your circuits. It's euphoric for a moment or two when every cell of the body, when every piece of DNA remembers God. The body reacts to these things. You've learned of it even in the last few days with the science. You can create spontaneous remission of any disease with God inside. Don't lose track of this. This is the reason for all of it, everything. It was given to you. The knowledge of this, the implantation of it in your DNA, all of this by the Pleiadians. We've told you this before. It's history. It's history that will be shown eventually through your technology and right now you're on the cusp of discovering there was history before history and then you'll discover there was history before that history and before that history up to five civilizations full-on civilizations on this planet that came and went for their own reasons you're on the last one number five I would like to tell you something. The first thing that has to happen to a civilization after the seeding that gets them on the track is the cognization of God. You cognize one God. Is it possible that everything was tied into one God and the last four civilizations didn't get it? They never got it. It's too easy for the ancients to look at the sky and say, that's God or the energy they feel off the earth and say that is part of God and this is part of God and you end up with multiple gods and this has been the way of it for centuries and eons until this civilization it wasn't that long ago only a few thousand years ago when one civilization on this planet one culture on this planet gave you the concept finally of one God the Israelites the Hebrews one God and this then has become the norm and all of this planet is monotheistic and it's the first civilization of all the civilizations you've had that have gone this far this is why there was so much hope the next step after cognizing one God is cognizing harmony with one God. And that is what is taking place in this room. That is what's taking place on this planet. We've said it before, just don't be confused. When we talk about the Jews as being chosen, they are. They were chosen to bring you one God and they're chosen to bring you solution in their land based upon what they know about one God. That makes sense. They're not done. That's what they're chosen for. In this time, in this time, and we've said it as goes the Jews go earth. They've got to do it. This is the second step. But dear ones, it's right on schedule. We have seen it before. Don't forget the reason you're here. Yahweh, creator of all things, and inside each of you.
And so we start the second section with the letter S. And that's starting. It stands for singing. Dear ones, have you heard of somebody's heart singing? Does that mean the heart makes a noise? And the answer is no. In back of me you have singing bowls. Indeed, they make a noise. Are they alive? No. And so the singing could be anything. And yet it means a benevolent energy of joy. So anything that sings is a benevolent energy of joy. Could you have intent sing? And if it did, why would it sing? What if the intent was filled with joy? Your whole countenance would sing and be filled with joy the first time you would see the newborn, perhaps the one with your own biology. And every cell in your body would sing. Oddly enough, you might be weeping, <laughs> but it sings. A crystalline choir is singing. And there are so many things in the air, a vibration in audible thing that you might hear with your ears but what else might be singing what if remembrance itself sings what if Akashic remembrance can sing what if when you combine energies Many Akashic remembrance have an entrainment that is to say they coordinate there's a confluence of synchronicity that locks together and sings the same intent. What would happen then? We present all of this to tell you that there is so much more than you know, than you think, than you've discovered about what you're doing. The heart sings, the intent sings, even the earth sings with you. And we never spoke of that, did we? Is it possible that there is a resonance in the ground that remembers and awakens when you do this? Well, we'll have to speak of that in a moment. There has to be. If this time capsule has been waiting, if you should pass this marker, of the precession of the equinoxes and it's been expecting what you're doing don't you think there'd be a reaction do you think it might even sing back <laughs> and some of you are feeling that exact same thing there's an alliance a confluence of purpose it's never one way dear ones it's never one way Think of these things. Continue the tones. Dear ones, the letter T stands for Todd. <laughs> we would normally call him Yai. But these are instructions for Todd. These are information for Todd. Yai also will be involved in a moment. In these few channels, we will reveal some things. There will be a revelation right now for the scientist who sits next to me. And then some instructions as well. Some of the revelations will not be understood by all, but he will. And this is for Todd, the scientist. I want my partner to go slow, for this is new.
I want to talk about Lemuria, Todd. It is well known that the whole premise of your remembering comes from your Lemurian mother. For those who don't know, we never speak, not really, of the father's side, but of the mother's side. The Seven Sisters is the name of the constellation, oddly enough, of nine stars. seven of which are seen in the sky as seven and giving them the gender of sisters you would think perhaps is a coincidence when the Pleiadians came and they came to many places on the planet but Lemuria that is where we call Lemuria and that small continent was isolated and that's why it was special and that is why we call upon it constantly as special isolated in that for thousands of years there was no influence either way and the teaching could be pure and it was and when you look at why the seeding was done the way it was it was done in a way that you would expect dear ones the mother gave birth the Pleiadian mother from a human father the confluence of the two gave DNA that was specific to what you have now it was 23 pairs of chromosomes and yet and yet everything else is base 12 everything when you take a look at the physics you see the base 12 everywhere Dear ones, you see it even in your life and you don't realize it. Why are there 12 tones to an octave in music? Why is there 360 degrees in the compass? That's not metric. In fact, let me, let me give you some information that perhaps you'd never thought of. The ancients decided that their measuring system would be base 12 and even to this day in this country you've kept it have you ever looked at this 12 inches in a foot 3 feet in a yard ounces 16s 12s 3s 4s that is an ancient system of measuring because everything is base 12 the metric system was adopted in certain civilizations for ease of counting but not elegance of truth everything is base 12 suddenly humanity has 23 pairs of chromosomes it's amazing isn't it doctor that humanity would do so well with a lopsided set of chromosomes well I have news for you you've got 24 two of them are multidimensional right from the Pleiadians sir and now you understand why it is that your multidimensional laser works the way it does on DNA it touches and talks to two chromosomes that are also multidimensional when you have the quantum lens someday and can measure quantum things and you turn it on DNA you'll see them in fact DNA shouts that they should be there don't they doctor <laughs> yes thank you <laughs> so indeed you are balanced you are the only creature on the planet that has two that are multidimensional completing the 24 that you should have science will say well there was this one fused with that one and this happened for some strange reason to give you 23 perhaps all of that is true but two of them are invisible to science because they're not in 3D they're not seeable but all the science that you have that works with DNA the way it does looks for things and tries to figure out why it does what craves the two that are missing and they see them working but they don't know why Todd is working with that 
And now he knows why a multidimensional invention has so much effect on DNA. Because two of the chromosomes are multidimensional as well. Now, let us move on. Todd, your mother sang lullabies to you. We told you this before. And some of them were in Pleiadian. And these are the things that you also remember. Your mother still speaks to you today. And she brings in multidimensional things. And this is the basis for the overlays of the tones. Even today you're doing. Bringing in a multidimensional part. Which by the way, now you realize, comes from the multidimensional quantum parts of your DNA. You've remembered it. And it is there. And you are giving it out. Perhaps for the first time. I have an assignment for you, sir. It seems simple. It may not be. You're going to meet again in May next year. Mont Blanc for a choir. By that time, I'm going to ask you to present two layers, simple, two layers, not in Pleiadian, not multidimensional, because your mother sang them to you in Lemurian. They'll be simple. It's the first time we've ever asked you to use lyrics, not sounds, not tones, but what you remember that your mother gave to you suddenly you will be a lyricist putting them together with a melody perhaps you remember Lemurian was easy didn't have that many letters didn't have that many sounds because the sounds all meant something else an elegant language simply presented and sung beautifully you might wonder, well, how are you going to remember such a thing? It's in there. It's in your kosh as strong as anything else. Your mother sang these in Lemurian. She had many languages. Multidimensional it was, some. But Lemurian, very 3D, just for you. If you want perhaps any help, you might get an idea of what it might have sounded like or even the meanings from the kahuna who is here. You can recognize her. She's the only human here who regularly wears a plant on her head. <laughs> there are elements of the Mamlurian language, and she knows what those are and what the ancients spoke. This will be perhaps an assist, a help. So the tones that you may bring by then not complex, but lyrical. It's a first for you. Do you accept? Yes. Good. <laughs> I knew you would. It was an earlier channel when we were where they mined the crystals and we spoke about the attributes of crystalline that is different from any other stone, any other gem. Human beings love crystals and there's a reason. Because they speak to you, they vibrate there's something there. And one of the things we had pointed out to you is that there's no such thing as a crystal of doom. <laughs> Every time you find one in any situation, it either speaks to you or calls to you or just sits there benevolent. There's no negativity with crystals. They're always in a complementary blessing mode. They're also, as you know, in a receptive mode. That is to say, they remember. 
they store. And so it is that energy workers love to have crystals around them. Sometimes they're like friends. So what I'm going to tell you is A stands for activation. You sit on the mother load. There is so much here, a mountain literally upside down under you that is pure. This area that you sit in and all of the area around this mountain encompasses. Knowing what I've told you, let me ask you this. Do you think a little bit of dirt is going to get in the way of the crystal sending you things? The mountain of crystal knows you're here. Imagine the benevolence, the joy, the celebration under your feet. You can't hear it, but the energy workers can feel it. Is it possible that they can talk back to you? And so we're going to do something. We're just going to take a moment. And the concentration will be on feeling the activated energy from this underground quartz crystal mountain. The appreciation, the celebration of you activating this that has waited all of this time with your intent, with your tones, with your joy. Imagine shaking hands with the earth in this fashion. And so I ask you right now just to be quiet and feel it. Energy workers, feel it because it is so potent right now. They're celebrating. Can you feel it? If you put out your hands, they'll tingle, dear ones. They're tingling because they are sending you gratitude. Crystals are benevolent. Feel this. You have just activated something special for this planet. There's so much thanks. Super benevolence. So deep in the earth, and it knows you're here. You think they're in the dark, they don't think so. They know you. Your consciousness is allied with them. Can you feel this? Just for a moment. And so it is the silence speaks as much as the grandest, loudest tone you've sung. For this moment, the earth has spoken back and said, thank you. I have one last channel. And then the activation will be complete. And the one last channel will be linking this node to a comparable node null on the planet with additional information you've been waiting for. Dear ones, indeed, it is the finale. And doctor, it's easy for me to talk to you while you're here where we can see you. And you may wish to answer. L stands for linking things together. I'm going to ask you some questions. I want to point out something. Fifteen years ago, doctor, Yah E came forward, and the first thing he did was not a beautiful pineal tone, but a whale sound. <laughs> did you know that today the longest tone that you did was a whale sound? What is it with whales and you? <laughs> I want you to tell me. Is it not true that you sailed into the icy waters into a place on this planet in order to possibly swim with whales? Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> Did I frighten you? Not yet. And would you tell 
us where that was. Maui. No, that's not icy waters. Chile. No, well, not exactly. Close. Was it not Patagonia? Hmm. I guess I was in the neighborhood. Hmm. <laughs> on purpose, on a small vessel, waiting and willing to climb in the water with whales. I wonder why you went to so much trouble to go there. You were called there. Hmm. You were called there because, dear ones, that is where whales go to find their mates and to have children, their babies, and to produce. Patagonia. That's where you went. And the water was chilly. Not the country, the temperature. <laughs> now, I will reveal, finally, why it is that he is so enamored with whales because he knows a secret internally one that you've been waiting for me to give you and it also tells you where the null is right now for Mount Ida the node whales dear humanity dear ones in this room doctor whales are the living crystalline grid they are the ones that carry the crystalline grid into the oceans. They're the library of consciousness for this planet. You have known this. You had to know this. You have cherished them. You have laughed when they jump out of the water. You've looked them in the eye. You've felt their wisdom. Every country in the world, if they have any kind of sense, they would have an agreement not to kill this animal, and many of them do. This is revered. The humanity of the earth is starting to recognize the value of this animal. It is a multidimensional thing that they have. They carry what the planet cannot in the crystalline grid, the living crystalline grid. And you seek them out, doctor, and you make their noises and you want to sing to them. You want to even hang upside down in the water to emulate what they do. And this is why. Therefore, I will tell you that the knoll associated with a node that is crystalline is Mount Fitzroy in Patagonia. Doesn't it make sense? That's where the whales are. That's where the crystalline grid is for the living part of it, not the esoteric part of it. Now you know why the doctor makes whale sounds. First. And that's what he enjoys the most. You have an affinity with this animal, don't you? Now you know why. The next time you see one, I want you to understand that they're more than you think. Much more. They've been saved from extinction, and they will continue to reproduce. But the place that they go to mate and have their children is important because the children then receive the crystalline information the very activation that you're making today goes right to them through Mount Fitzroy and so it is right.